Hey guys, Keith here. Um, I wanted to walk you through a new effect that um, Kevin and I have been working on, and it's not just inspired um, by this website called Interactive Shader Format, but it actually uses um, these interactive shaders and it makes these available through XLights. Um, now, it doesn't support all of them yet, but it does support a surprising number um, in a reasonable period of time. So what this website is, it's a uh, website that makes available for free download a number of these shaders. Now these shaders are, um, they're actually little programs and these little programs are actually designed to run on the graphics card in your PC and they generate effects. Now some of those effects are based on images, some of the effects are just um, generating um, data. And it, it's not the only one. There, there are a number of these sites out here that you know, make these, uh, these shaders available. Now they're generally designed for use in video and consequently they tend to work very well on very large um, uh, matrices. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how that plays out in X-Lights on uh, much smaller matrices and on whole house effects and things like that. Now, shader programs are, um, like I said, they're little C programs, they run on your, um, your video card. And uh, the difference with this ISF or uh, this interactive shader format stuff is that they're packaged in a certain way which makes it possible for them to dynamically generate a, um, a set of parameters here that you can start to change. So you can start to change the glow rate and a few things like that, um, which is quite useful. Now there are other sites out there. So for instance, he says, getting rid of that. Here's a, another website. This one is called shadertoy.com. It includes a number of shaders. Um, they take a little bit of time to download. Um, now these shaders in theory will work. Um, the problem is, is they're not packaged correctly. Um, and so one of the things that, uh, that people may want to look at is, and I may well make a video about, is how you would go about taking a shader um, here and uh, converting the shader across um, to use uh, within X-Lights. So here's one that seems to draw clouds and that you actually, um, it flies through the tunnel. It's a little bit slow at the moment because actually it's probably unavailable because I'm running it in the other panel. So, so what have we done? Well, we've added a new effect and here it is, it's called the shader effect. And by default, it uh, like the video effect, it draws a red box, meaning that it's broken. <laughs> In this case, we haven't chosen a shader file. Now, what I have done is I have gone uh, to this website, the, uh, the interactive shader format, and I've clicked download up here. And when you click download, it downloads a file, which is a .fs file. And so that fs file is the file that I need to choose. Now, some of them come down in a zip file containing a .fs file and a .vs file. If you just grab the fs file, nine times out of 10, that's gonna work just fine. So let's grab one. This is a slightly different one, but we'll grab this trigonometric one. And we click open. And what Xlights will do is it will, it will generate a whole bunch of, um, parameters for the effect. Um, now, it looks like I need to do some work on some scroll bars, etc. here, but basically these are a whole bunch of parameters that this effect expects. Um, so we can lower the density, which I don't know, doesn't seem to be doing a hell of a lot. Maybe the multiplier rate, okay, that seems to have sped it up and made it a little bit more dynamic. Um, yeah, maybe we'll drop offset one down. And so you can play with these parameters and it will change the, the effect that renders. Um, now some of these effects will draw from the color bar. That's pretty uncommon. I think I've only found one or two which will take typically the first color, um, maybe the second color. 
um, some of them will actually draw from an effect underneath. So for instance, this one here is taking a butterfly effect and then distorting the butterfly effect, much like the warp effect does. Um, and if that's the case, there'll actually be a, a piece of text in here that says you should use canvas mode for this shader. And in that case, in this case, that's what you need to do. Um, if you don't, um, if you don't use the canvas mode, then it just doesn't appear to do anything and the butterfly comes through. So here are some others that, and I've just randomly chosen. Here's, um, uh, I won't even try, attempt to pronounce the name that they seem to have given it. It's quite an odd name, a simplex tri-tap. Um, by default, it, it's actually got a scale that's something like this, which is not that impressive. But once you start to bring the scale up, you get quite an interesting effect. Um, and you can change, I imagine this slows it down, speeds it up. Um, the seeds are likely to just have an impact on exactly where they are. Now, all of these parameters here do support um, um, uh, value curves. So um, you can go and put a ramp on this value curve and you get an effect that changes colour um, over the course of the duration of the, the effect. Uh, here's one that appears to do some sort of liquid flow. Um, here you might want to throw on a value curve here. We get something that seems to slow down its flow. Um, here's another one with some coloured bars at twist, twisty colours as it calls. And here is an effect uh, called wisps, which is actually really boring when you first drop it down. But with some playing around with the parameters and adding a value curve to rotate, um, it's producing a rather interesting effect. Um, so, I, I mean, this, this seriously opens up a huge array of effects that we can possibly introduce. Um, there are a couple of downsides to it. Um, one is, is, is it does rely on the OpenGL technology um, and the video card, and that does limit rendering to one thread at a time. Um, but that being said, it does run on your graphics card, which means it gets to take advantage of the massive parallel um, processing capability of your graphics card. So it does seem to be a bit of a push here. I'm just putting it on one matrix. Um, it definitely doesn't feel sluggish to use. It seems to be um, quite responsive. Uh, who knows how that will be once you have a whole show and you have all sorts of things going on. Um, it may well lag a little bit every now and then. Um, but yeah, a huge number of options. Um, uh, check out uh, this uh, interactive shader format. Um, like I said, not every single shader will work, um, but a reasonable number too, and uh, they produce some um, interesting um, results. And hopefully it just creates yet more um, effects in your arsenal to uh, produce amazing um, Christmas lights and other sorts of shows. Thanks a lot. Guys.